The Second Extrasolar War ended with the death of an entire world. Experimental petrocyte warheads, intended to be used against Earth, were instead ignited over Helgan. The detonation catalyzed in the planet's atmosphere, and petrocyte-fueled atomic fire tore across its surface. In seconds, the Helgan Empire had been destroyed. The Helgast people had paid the price for their relentless desire for power but even the victors of the conflict were horrified at its cost. The survivors of what would become known as the Terracide were limited to the lucky few who had time to seek protection in underground shelters, and those who had been safely off-world at the time of the attack. In a torrid irony, the Helgen military, those most responsible for the destruction of their homeworld, remained at least partially intact. Its fleets in orbit had been shielded against the majority of the petrocyte detonation, and they remained the last bargaining chip left to the Hellgast. Unwilling and perhaps unable to defeat what would almost certainly be a final suicidal attack by remnant Hellgast forces, the United Colonial Nations and the Interplanetary Strategic Alliance agreed to an armistice. Vecta, jewel of the Alpha Centauri system and long the target of Hellgast ambitions, was partitioned. Half the planet would remain under the authority of the UCN, and a new Helgen regime would be granted sovereignty over the rest. In 2360, Helgen warships appeared over Vecta. For the first time, however, these were not the vanguard of an invasion, but transports bringing the scattered refugees of a defeated people to their new home. A year later, the Helgen Republic was founded. Optimistically referred to as New Helgan, the Young Republic quickly emulated the worst aspects of its predecessor. Hera Vasari, daughter of the man most responsible for the Helgen nation, was appointed chancellor of a new civilian government. The dominance of the military even before the events of the Terracide prevented any political reforms, however. While Hera Vasari sought to avoid the same mistakes that had ruined her people, true power was consolidated within the military, reducing her to little more than a figurehead. Today, the Helgen Republic is nearly indistinguishable from the Helgen Empire. It is a totalitarian police state that exerts total control over its populace. Unlike its predecessor, however, the Republic lacks the economic power and population to maintain even the current state of its military. The state has worked to restore its centralized industrial potential above any other consideration. Heavy manufacturing plants and space elevators dominate the Hellgast sector of Vecta, while its citizens suffer from poverty, famine, and rampant shortages of consumer goods. Mass graves have been reported in the Helgen sector, alongside desperate acts of cannibalism. Government-sponsored initiatives intended to maintain a high birth rate and repopulate the Helgen race have further complicated the situation and led to unsustainable demographics. Dire conditions amongst the lower classes have led to widespread crime and the formation of various extremist and anti-government groups. The most prevalent of these is the Black Hand, terrorists hoping to start a new war between the Helgast and the ISA. They despise the policies of appeasement set by their own government and attack civilian targets on both sides of Vecta. The rise of tensions on Vecta was epitomized in the construction of the Vectan Helgast Wall, an enormous barrier physically separating each side. Ironically, the construction of the wall was the only joint venture in which both the Vectans and Helgast have cooperated with one another. The wall passes through the core of Vecta City, and the isolated communities on either side now exist in starkly contrasting states. The Helgast army remains a shadow of its former self, and unable to maintain its former doctrine of attrition warfare on a vast scale. Instead, the mass formations it utilized in the Second Extrasolar War were restructured into smaller units, emphasizing tactical flexibility and superior firepower. To offset its numerical disadvantage, the Helgen armed forces are increasingly reliant on drones and robotics. 
Its navy is likewise a pale reflection of former Hellgast glory. The ships which loom over the Vecta sectors are relics from the Second Extrasolar War, intermittently retrofitted, but hardly a match for modern ISA warships. But unbeknownst to ISA intelligence and even some of the highest members of new Helgen civilian government, the decrepit state of the Helgast military was in fact a ruse, meant to conceal the largest rearmament campaign in human history. Only a portion of Helgen's survivors had taken refuge on Vecta. Others had remained on their broken homeworld, establishing a new military apparatus deep beneath the planet's shattered surface. Mining operations had been established on a scale far larger than was publicly reported, clandestinely providing raw materials for a restored military-industrial complex. Under the leadership of Jorhan Stahl, the main architect behind the petrocyte weapons detonated over Helgan, hundreds of new warships had been constructed and the Helgast military restored. Once the full extent of the Helgast's presence on their homeworld was realized, the ISA moved to counter it. Losses were horrific on both sides, and only the actions of a select few prevented the situation from escalating into a renewed total war. If there is one trait above all the Helgast have repeatedly demonstrated, it is their remarkable capacity for survival. Perhaps no other group in human history could endure the same struggle without breaking, and in spite of their suffering, they remain capable of winning for themselves a new future. What shape that future will take, however, remains difficult to predict. Many within the Republic's government only want peace and prosperity for their people, but control still remains within the cabal of military leaders who desperately want to restore their former glory. The final words of scholar Vasari promised that his death would bring about only madness. History, thus far, has proven him right. The Templin Institute investigates alternate worlds and realities. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to directly support us, vote in polls to determine future topics, and receive some cool rewards, please consider pledging to our Patreon page.